Welcome to Mad About Money. I'm Maddie Alexander Grout, and this is the podcast where we talk all about interesting money stories and we interview really interesting people about how they've come along in their journey. And um, I'm here with the lovely Catherine Ann Reed from Docket. Catherine Ann, my love, it's so nice to have you here. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Tell us a little bit about you. Hi, <laughs> sorry for cutting in there. It's lovely to be here. So I'm Catherine Ann. I'm the founder and CEO of Docket, a platform to help you reduce the time, stress and cost of your day to day life admin. Which I love. It's a very, very important thing to be doing. Um, and I think it's a great platform. Um, I'm really excited about hearing your story because I see you everywhere. Um, and I'm really, really impressed. It's so nice to see a female founder absolutely smashing it and raising some money for a change because it's bloody hard for us ladies, I think. So first of all, huge congratulations on your raise so far. You're doing really well. Um, so tell me, what is your money story? So, well, there's a couple of money stories in there. Tell me all, tell me all, oh, start at the beginning. So there's a money story about the product you know the the yes the, yeah uh, and then there was there's the money story about a uh, having to raise money as a female founder to yeah it out. so I'll start with uh, why I'm doing what I'm doing does that yes work? that does indeed so um I was a lone parent of a young girl Chloe my daughter who's 21 now uh, I was going through a divorce I was working full-time up in London and I found myself literally drowning in my day-to-day life admin. So how, what did that look like? So I didn't know where anything was. I didn't know what I had, what I didn't. I knew I had a couple of pensions. I wasn't sure where. But the big thing was I was never on top of when things were due. So what would happen would be I would be paying for stuff that I didn't even know uh, that I had. I would be paying things late, so I would get, like, I, my tax return was always late. It was like, for God's sake, you know, it's like, put a hundred pounds out in the garden and set fire to it. I might as well. So I was had all this money that was leaking out unnes- unnecessarily, and I was re- stressed out my head. You know, my, yeah. my saying, I never knew whether I was blown up or stuffed, and I never knew if I was blown up or stuffed. Um, I think I'm both most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think we all are. Um, so that um, I looked for something to help me and I couldn't find anything and as we became more digital and less paper it actually got worse um, so and I had you know I had sort of yellow stickies on the fridge and um, I would set myself reminders send myself emails and it was just a nightmare so I thought right someone's going to fix this problem why not me? Although I did, check, I did check it wasn't just me that had the problem and put my stake in the ground and said, right, I'm going to create a solution to help to help people. Um, so I knew that I didn't have the right skills myself to build it. And I certainly didn't have the money to build it. So got the ducks in a row in terms of the research, the people, and the second part of the money story was then raising money. <laughs> Pardon yeah. me, email founder. Um, it's hard. It's it, tough, isn't it? It's, you know, really, having... it's really, really tough. I actually think it's really tough for all founders. I think. Yes. That, yeah. I think. I, you know, weird. Weirdly, actually, I was I was speaking to a a, a, a white middle aged man who is raising and he said that actually he's finding it really tough to raise at the moment because he's not diverse in any way (laughs) and I was like oh yeah I mean I guess actually now because people are kind of looking more to to help female founders or you know I mean I I'm quite lucky actually you know in a weird way that I've got that I'm a female founder I've got ADHD I've got like a disability I'm like I'm I'm all over the show hopefully that means I'm going to raise really fast (laughs) I think it does I think yeah. that's exactly what it means. <laughs> but it's but it but it is very hard. And I think there are lots of people who are out there championing female founders. And um, you know, you've got like um female founders rise, which is just launching with Emmy Faust. Faust, I don't even know how you say her name, but like I mean, that is an amazing thing. I've definitely signed up to that. 
um loads of things so how's how's your journey gone where, where did you oh, start what did okay. you do? But, but i'm going to come back in something that you said about yourself mm-hmm. about you ticking all the boxes the main thing is you've got a great product that oh thanks lovely yeah so i think it, i do it's not, it's not enough to be ticking boxes it's not enough to be diverse it's no you not at all you have a really something that is either better than the solving a big problem yeah. um so so it, it is all it is all about that um so i i think the first thing about raising finance is is timing um because I, as as a first time founder, I wasn't sure when, and so I started speaking to the wrong people mm. far too early. So I think one of the first people I had uh, reached out to was Dan Bauer. Dan's a VC. Luckily, he's a really friendly VC. He gave great great advice, and it was like, not right now. <laughs> um, actually, you need to have more than the back of a fag packet. Yes, I think the key thing to the fundraise was getting the data room and I didn't even know what a data room is I thought oh this is something magical you know what it's basically a place where you have all the information that you need that basically end-to-end talks about your business so it's your your financials who your directors are what your business plan is you know how are you going if someone's giving you money how are they going to get the return on their money and how quickly now investors um daft you know they never came down in the last shower they know that probably what you're going to say isn't the journey you're going to go on yeah they need to feel confident that you understand what the journey looks like and that you know how to make your numbers add up absolutely we spoke to different founders i think it's sort of different founders different investors and i think that the key thing for me was it was about building relationships. Mm. So it was speaking to people who understood the problem, who could who shared the same vision that that we had, um, and that were prepared to take the risk. Yeah, because it is it's, it's a big risk, um, and luck. We were lucky that we did. All, we also qualified for the capital pilot boost fund which was fifty thousand pounds so that was great that really started us on our investment journey uh because they do a rating so you put in your business plan and they rate your suitability to uh, on investment it's hardcore isn't it it's hardcore and now we didn't get uh, sufficient marks the first time round i'll be really honest um so when we submitted it but what they did give us was great feedback on Mm information we have. so they do it very cold so you don't physically physically pitch to them you just send it in and so we sent it in and we got it back and they said look you you're not tight enough they're there and there so we did some more work in it luckily we qualified and we got the fifty thousand. and having that um and the report gave other, the other investors we were speaking to the confidence to give us the money yeah. yeah but um like any of it we've used the money <laughs> so we've used it we use it's, it. it's weird it's weird that isn't it like you know investors are like yeah we'll give you some money and then you use it and they're like where's the money gone and it's like but you needed us to spend it so that we could grow and yeah. then like now we need more <laughs> like... so we um so we've built out the the, the product amazing we'll be raising again but what we're looking at right now is focusing on generating revenue back to money generating our own revenue to show that that it is a product that doca is something yeah. that people are prepared to pay for and and you know that's going okay it's been live for six weeks we've got some people that have taken the lifetime membership some still on the 45 day free trial annual and businesses that have given it to their employees as an employee benefit so that's our that's how we make money we don't yeah. uh, we, we don't sell or share uh, our users data and we don't add have advertising or marketing affiliation on the platform it's one a single safe space for you to manage yeah. admin but but that's what you pay for it's brilliant. I just think it's an absolutely fabulous idea. So when he, when's your next raise going to be? 
So we're looking at uh, the end of Q3 uh, this year. So probably starting it around the end of September, because by then we'll have some more metrics on uh, how the journey's going, who the, you know, who the users are. I mean, right now I'm speaking to users every, sing every single day. Um, and it's not just the people who are saying, oh my God, this is amazing. It's people who actually have unsubscribed too because it's really important we understand who our user is and why and if someone yeah. has unsubscribed why have you unsubscribed was it was it not for you was it just the solution not right you don't need it was there something that you know that you felt uncomfortable with um were you just a competitor having a wee nosy? So all of those I've got so many of them on my app. <laughs> all of those things. I mean, luckily we've we've only had a handful of people uh, unsubscribe, but it's still really important to understand what people are looking for and how we can improve because that's part of our next journey is what are we going to use the money for? And yeah. right now, we've got an idea, we've got a, a pretty strong backlog on things that the users have said, look, it would be handy if we could have this, this and this. But what we won't be doing is just a knee jerk, adding on loads of features in the hope that it will make it more sticky. It needs to be sticky as it is for users. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the feedback that we've had from the users that are using it more regularly is that it's a nice sticky product. So yeah, let's see. But yeah, we need to have more more metrics for our, I think, for our yeah. Product. No, that, that makes sense. But I mean, from, from a perspective of an ADHD person, it's like literally an ADHD person's dream product because <laughs> I'm constantly losing things all the time like um i mean i think i think a little idea for like a physical product that you could have you could also have like uh like a like a like a like a little plastic kind of thing where like people keep really important things like passports and driving license like the actual important things so not just the paper versions but the physical yeah. versions i reckon that's got to come at some point where you've got like a a branded docket filing system that yeah. people can have in their house so you can have have a little ad, added up sell on um because i know that that would be like some i've got like a filing system where like the kids birth certificates are in there and like all the physical stuff but that doesn't help me if things are going to run out because nobody reminds me of it anything and there's no like you know I think my worst one is my MOT I almost forget every single year that my MOT is due and I'm like oh my god it's so That's one of the great things so we've got uh it's a, called an API so it's an application program yeah interface. so that's like a direct link into the DVLA so when you one of the first things you can do when you sign up to DOCA is put in your car registration and that'll instantly pull through when your MOT and your tax is due. Now, for your MOT, if you go to a garage that you know it's always a six-week backlog, you can set your reminder yeah. for six, seven weeks. So you know when your MOT is going to run out, but also you get a, a nudge to say, hey, Maddie, your MOT is going to be due. Get it, you know, get it booked in kind of thing absolutely and like your annual service and like yeah. but, but even stuff like checking your tires you know because that checking your tires regularly can save you an absolute fortune um if your tires are low it means that your car is sluggish your, your car is not going to be performing at its optimum peak so your fuel consumption is going to be worse um but also as well you're putting yourself at risk by having their tires that's dangerous for you it's illegal as well so you know people should be checking it but things like that having reminders to check things like that on your car you know that really really saves you so much money because you're doing things right yeah. and god i couldn't even tell you the amount of times that i've not paid parking fines <gasps> and like you know <laughs> if you've got, if you've got a facility in there where like people can upload a document and set a reminder to say I need to pay this but even stuff like and, and this is a, an idea for you if, if it's not in there I don't know if it is but um like putting being able to put in dates when things are due so like school trips if you're uh, yeah I mean that for for parents is an absolute game changer because um, I'm like yeah my 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 son's like mommy have you paid for my trip I'm like what trip 
And he's like, the school trip I'm going on tomorrow. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> so, you know, I, I am I am absolutely the worst person at life admin to the point where, like, I forget everything all the time. Um, and it's not good enough having it in a calendar. I need it in somewhere that I can go and check really regularly. And I think that, you know, I need to be one of your, your new users, I think. So um, I'm I think the good thing is about in terms of what we do and what we do as parents and what we do as people is we set reminders in different places. So yeah. you've got a family calendar or in front of the fridge. You might use your calendar on Outlook. You might use another Google calendar. And people have got maybe half a dozen different email addresses. Oh my god, yeah. What it does is it just pulls it into one. But something I need to say that's really, really important for anybody that's listening, they might think, oh, this just sounds really overwhelming. Just one thing. Just add yeah. one thing at a time. Don't don't say, oh, do you know what? I'm going to knock out half a day and do my life admin. No, life's too short. Yeah. But as things happen add it in so that, yeah. you know like james clear atomic habits you know where it's just you know do one tiny thing maybe do it every day every week and you start to build it up and all of a sudden you know when the school trips are you know when your mot's due you know yeah. where your national insurance number is your utr when all your insurances and, and insurances and warranties as well oh god all yeah. of those things, they cost so much money so if you set yourself a reminder so you say right okay the home contents insurance is going to be due say the 30th of august you set yourself a reminder for the 30th of july so you've got yeah. to find a better deal um, we're not, exactly. we're not offering better deals we're not offering discounts that's your job that's my job yeah so, job. so so this is the thing so so we have um a, an insurance comparison site so as part of mad about money you can go into the app you can browse for different car insurers different home insurers and different pet insurers and you can find the cheapest deal literally find the cheapest deal it doesn't cost you anything it's just somewhere you can go and compare um and then the discount so you know really good point about making it a habit um we you know some of the feedback i've had for from our discount platform is that oh like i just can't be bothered to go and order a voucher it's like that's fine but it takes 2 minutes once you're set up on it and yeah. it takes 2 minutes it you know it's a it's part of you know build it into your routine yeah. if you know Absolutely. that you're sat there writing your shopping list and you're planning your meals for the week go and order your voucher because it's going to save you hundreds of pounds a year like but you just need to get into the habit and that's the thing it's about building you know even down to the fact that you know before we started we were talking about water um we were talking about how neither of us drink that much water and like we've both got our waters here um it's about forming those habits and it's about good habits over bad habits because would you rather be scrabbling around for the rest of your life feeling like you're terribly overwhelmed and really shit at life admin or would you rather start sorting your shit out? I mean, I know which one I'd rather do. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And, and it's the same with money. People are like, oh, you know, the cost of living, cost of living, it's so horrible. It's like, I mean, yes, it is, but do something about it. You know, F start forming a positive habit and you will get to the right place. You know, we, have, we don't charge people for access to our discounts. Um, all you have to do is register for the Mad About Money app and register for our discount portal. And then you get access to things that will save you money every single week yeah. um but it's just getting people to do that it's a habit forming thing absolutely. so it's really interesting absolutely it's, in, it's interesting you saw there's like we had a one of our users had said because he'd signed up to to dock it it made him see, so he said you know i just started adding things started adding subscriptions between him and his wife were paying and there is a cost of living crisis that <laughs> yeah. we're all saying we don't have enough money they were paying three subscriptions for disney plus Three. Oh my god that's literally the worst so i last night i was really cross with myself because i did something that i well and actually it was fine i i rented the little mermaid on dvd through through sky store uh -huh. because i was desperate to watch it absolutely desperate to watch it and like my husband was away it was the first time we've been away in ages so i thought i'm gonna watch a girly film that he won't watch with me so yeah. i rented it and then someone said but isn't it on disney plus and I was like, oh, shit, it was on Disney Plus, I've just paid. But I remembered that actually I cancelled my Disney Plus subscription because Grey's Anatomy finished. 
And I was like, I'm not paying for this anymore because I don't need it. And I, I mean, I've got Prime, I've got Netflix. I have different things for different yeah. purposes. And that does cost a bit of money, but I do do a bit of friend sharing. So like I share a subscription to Netflix with my friend and she shares my Prime subscription. So we we save a bit of money that way. But luckily it's not out on Disney Plus yet because I thought actually subscribing to Disney Plus for a month then cancelling would have been cheaper than renting it from Sky Store. But it's not there yet, so I felt bad. However, I did fall asleep halfway through the bloody film, didn't I? Oh, no. <laughs> Are you able to still watch it, though? I've still watched it. Luckily, I bought it rather than renting it, so it was fine. But it was a good film up until that point. But what we were saying, but weirdly as well, I got I got absolutely done last night because I came back from my spa weekend, um, and I am terrible at checking the family calendar. If it's not electronic, I can't do it. Um, and I got, arrived home, and my husband was like, I'll see you later. I was like, will you see me tomorrow? He's like, no, I'm at work all week. I'm not coming home. And I'm like, oh, God, I have to solo parent for four days. And I didn't know. So, like, that completely threw me because, like, anything that throws an ADHD out, it's like having your plans completely swallowed. Um, so, yeah, instead of me thinking that my husband was just away for a night, he's actually away for four nights. And I was like, why, why don't I check the family calendar? Because it's not digital and it's not in my hand. I can't see it. So, you know, it, what works for one person doesn't work for another. No. But I, I but I think it's it's very much like needing to have stuff in one place visually. Um, and I I mean, yes, this is suitable for everybody. For But for ADHD people, I mean, God, this could be something that people claim for through access to work. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I want because basically how access to work works is that you can you can get a subscription for lots of different things annoyingly I've already put my application in and it's been received but next year I will apply um but you can get access to work to pay for things which help you with assistance to your life so actually oh, okay. this is some this is another place where you should be promoting it you should be talking about access to work and how people could actually use it for their disabilities to help them to organize their life and, and it definitely would. And the other thing exactly. is having a, a Chloe who has disabilities, I know the amount of paperwork that comes oh God, yeah. with, you know, the so disability living allowance, PIP, motability, yeah. um, universal credit, and all of those things have got different reference numbers. They codes. do. Oh, and, but, and, also, and also being a small business owner, like, your yeah. blooming UTR and your like employer's yeah. number and all of these yeah, things. It's like, oh my God. And at the moment, like, you know, I keep them in my notes in my phone and that is not a secure and safe place to keep things like that because they're important details. Don't tell me off. I, you can tell me off afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I I think that that's, that's a, re it's a really good point, isn't it? That, yeah. you know, all of your life admin in one place, just, it's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. Um, and it's, it's going to, Reduce your I mean, stress. Reduce your stress. Reduce like stress. Thing we've got enough stress, and and it's it's not just about your life admin. It is about your pets as well. People, you know, absolutely pet, pet men. I mean, we had written about that in our newsletter. You know, so people that have got a furry family, you know, vaccination. Warning, yes, strangers. What's the microchip number? Oh God, yeah. All and do you know what? That that's so important as well because I, um we're going on holiday in a couple of weeks time and I realized that Dexter's vac vaccinations weren't up to date um and I phoned the vets and I was like can we get Dexter's vaccinations up to date and they were like we've got a three-week waiting list so we can't get you in so I've had to give him to a friend to look after rather than putting him in kennels yeah, yeah. which will be nicer for him to be fair yeah. but you know and also like if he'd have had his vaccinations we could have taken him with us but he hadn't so we caused ourselves a hell of a load of pain so I am yeah I am the bad bad non-organized life person that like I'm probably your <laughs> ideal client actually <laughs> Maybe. I mean it's, it's interesting because some people um because at first we thought oh we'll help people who aren't organized but actually some people who aren't organized that's how they roll you know I mean I do fly by the seat of my pants all the time and I fairly I do all right I wing it you always get there you always get there but yeah. and and conversely we thought maybe people who are really organized wouldn't want it but actually you know we've been wrong in both counts because a lot of people who are really organized have said 
oh my god this is great because i've been using excel spreadsheets i've been using this yeah actually this is bit and it's i think a lot of it is it's about the reminders yes and and, and the relevant paperwork being attached well it's not all paperwork because sometimes you know there isn't paperwork involved but if you've got a reminder for your car insurance or pet insurance whatever coming up yeah get that paperwork attached to it you can say okay right so I was paying, say, for example, £100 last month, uh, last year. I'm going to try and get a better deal. Yeah. I mean, even even, even down to, you know, how many Disney Pluses you've got, you know. <laughs> it's it's, cra- it's crazy. Um, but also, like, I mean, I, I found that reviewing my subscriptions, especially after COVID, because during COVID, I signed up for loads of, like, school learning apps and things that at the time were free and then like they charge you like, like 70 quid for the year after that and I I got stung by one of them that was like a um like an online earn- learning app that I downloaded for Ben which I'm pretty sure he never actually even looked at um and they charged me 70 pounds it's like if you pay for things or you have a free trial for something I mean free trials get people all the time, all the time. um if you're if you're using I mean could you also put things in like your debt payments so you know when you're paying your debts. Yeah. Also, you're um like, I mean, I hate to say it, and I'm a massive, massive like anti fan um, of things like Klarna and Clearpay yeah. because I think they get people into debt. But if you are reminding yourself that you have to pay this thing off in three months and you have to pay a certain amount, it helps you to organise your money as well, doesn't it? So does I mean you could set yourself a wee reminder? Yeah. Um, so that you've got them all together. I mean, we're not, we don't ask people to put in their banking information or anything. No. But what you could do is just set yourself a wee, just set yourself a wee reminder that it's actually, yeah. that it is actually there. Amazing. Going to so, so, yeah, I mean, best, best thing ever. So where do people find you? So you can, we're a web app, so you don't find us on the app store. Um, so we're a web app because that means you can use us across any screen you like. So Brilliant. people like to use it on their desktop, some on their their you know their their iPad or any phone, and you can find us at docket. That's d o q i t dot i o. So, but and it's interesting. One of the things I'm going to do is get because people pronounce it all kinds of different ways, which is oh, how do they pronounce it? So we've had docree. Dokwi, oh Dokwi. That's, be That's like Mrs. Bouquet, isn't it? <laughs> okay. uh, so uh, so docket.io. Um and you can find me on LinkedIn, we're on we're on Instagram, um, we're on Twitter, we're, we're on threads, uh, we're going to be going on TikTok, we're going to learn from the master herself. Oh yes, you are. <laughs> I love it. Um but but I always make myself available if anyone wants to talk about it, then yeah we're here and amazing and, you know, we're, we're we're young we're a young co- company and you're still raising investment as well if anybody wants to get in contact about that absolutely uh, absolutely and uh, yeah love to hear what problems people are having and see if we can help we're not we're never going to help everyone but for those that we can we're here amazing it's been so lovely to have you on I'm really excited Thank to hear you. like about your future journey and I know that we're going to be chatting a lot as we always do um, for anybody who is listening to this podcast on Spotify or on Apple Music um, you are in the wrong place you need to download the Mad About Money app and you need to go and watch the actual video in the actual app where you can see our faces and hear our expressions um, and downloading the Mad About Money app is completely free. Um, it helps you to save money in your everyday living expenses, but it also helps you with every single area in your life that leads to making your money better, um, including your mental health, your physical health, your work life, and like making it all in balance and harmony to give you a better financial journey. Um, so I'm Addie Alexander Grout. You can find me on on the app. Um, best place to find me but also on LinkedIn as well Uh, Mad About Money are also fundraising at the moment so if anybody wants information get in touch about that and we will see you next week thanks for listening